Hello, motherfuckers. What's happening, hell raisers and harlots? Hey there, all my bad bitches and unproblematic niggas up, down, and all around the internet. It's his I, the one, the only, Kimber Shan. Don't call me Kim, ho. It's okay to be extra because I tell it like it is. And welcome to A Quickie with Kimber Shan, the show that gives you the facts, foolery, the fuck-ups, tells you something, and gives you some inspiration, Kimspiration, all in 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes or less because who doesn't love a quickie? So before we get started, I want to introduce you guys to a very special guest we have today. Hello. She's gorgeous, <laughs> she's 6'2", she's an internationally published supermodel, she's a former pro hooper, she's Jamaican Wagwanti. <laughs> <laughs> and she's really out here killing it. So, yeah, we have Sheba in the house. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited about today. Yes, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. Uh, busy, busy, but, um, yeah, it's, it's been great. <laughs> That's great. I'm so happy to have you here. You. You're the first model I've ever interviewed, so this is going to be fun. <laughs> like, I know in the digital age, like, so many people say they model, but I can attest that you really do. I see you working <laughs> all the time, constantly doing something. So, mm -hmm. like, she's a legit model, y'all. <laughs> so let's jump right into the first segment, which is facts, foolery, and fuck-ups. It's our pop culture segment. So okay. I'm just going to talk about a couple of stories that are going on right now. Now, the first story is a sad story. Um, in Jacksonville, a 21-year-old man um, shot down three black people at a Dollar General store. And these stories like this really, really upset me. And I feel like it happens so much now that people are kind of getting desensitized to it. Like, it's like it'll happen and then people will talk about it for a couple of minutes and then it'll just go away. And it's like, what are y'all going to do to stop this? Right. So I just hate that we live in a place in a time where people get shot shopping at Dollar General, a place where people go all the time for no reason. Man. And it was a racist thing. So how do you feel about that? Um, every time I hear these stories, they, they obviously touch home for me. Um, I have a lot of family, friends, a lot of siblings. Um, uh, I know for... Uh, black men specifically, it's um, it's definitely harder. So with me having uh, seven brothers, oh, um, wow, I have four. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. wow! Okay. I'm the only girl. Have? Really? Yes. Oh my goodness! I wonder what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> something else. <laughs> it was something else. I tell you. <laughs> so um, yeah, every time I hear these stories, um, I, I I do have a moment where. You know, I kind of think like, you know, what if, you know, it's just getting closer and closer to home. And um, like you said, we're getting desensitized to it. Like yeah. um, how often it's shown on the news, on the media. We actually have videos and stuff where we can see now. Yeah. Um, and I think that um, it helps in the sense that it brings awareness to it and um, on a broader scale, like internationally, but then also, like you said, it desensitizes us to where we're like used to seeing it and we go through the motions of like um, having our emotions involved in it and then like, okay, we're back to our normal schedule. And, right, like yeah. it happens so much that yeah. it's like, oh my God, this is terrible. And then yeah. everybody's like, well, yep. and then two weeks later it happens again. Yeah. So I just hate that Nobody does anything about it. And there was, yeah. like, a shooting at um, a college in North Carolina. Yeah, yeah I, I heard about that, that too. Yeah. And it's, like, even the coverage on that, it wasn't talked about that much. And this is on a college campus. Right, so. right. I don't know what's wrong with the world, but somebody need to fix it, Jesus. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, another story I saw a lot of people talking about was the NPC influencer Pinky Doll. Yeah. So apparently she's brown skin. Yeah. And I was shocked because I saw so many people saying, oh, look, another light skinned girl going viral yeah. and all this other stuff. Yeah. But I was like, wow, like she's really like brown for real. Yeah. So I kind of feel like filters are out of control. Out of this world. <laughs> or like, I'm like, was this intentional? Right. Was she like, 
I don't know, but I mean, I guess in the bigger picture, it paid off because now right. she has a right. huge following and mm -hmm. people care about what she's doing. Right. So, right. but I just saw a lot of outrage about yeah, it. Yeah, I know. I, I saw that myself. I was really surprised when I saw her. It was a, an award show. Yeah, or it was um, the Streamy Awards. Yeah, yeah, I saw that, and I was like, yeah, when I saw her on stage, I was like, wow, that's the same person. That's I was like, wait, who is that? Like, right. I was like, who is she? I don't even know this person. Right, right. I was so confused, yeah. but. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, colorism, I could go there, but that's a conversation we don't even have time for today. Yeah. Like, it's too, too much. <laughs> but on the backs of colorism, another story that is really trending on Twitter, I haven't seen people talk about that much on Instagram. And I really didn't want to talk about this because I feel like lately I've been giving washed up love and hip hop people way too much attention. Mm. <laughs> but Erica Minna apparently called Spice uh -huh. a monkey. Yeah, I saw that. And I was like, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And um, colorism, mm -hmm. once again, or just the fact, anything, honestly, anything to do with a monkey and you're black, like, just don't do it. Yeah. Just never do it ever. And I just, Man. I feel like it's disrespectful. Mm -hmm. I feel like just, I don't even know yeah. what to say. Like, I really could drag her right now, <laughs> but because we are on limited time, I'm not even <laughs> fixing to go there, but... Right. She's definitely not somebody that I support in any way, shape, or form. Right. And she can go. Honestly, right. I'm tired of the whole... The fact that Love & Hip Hop is still a thing, like, I'm right. over it, tired of it, been tired of it. Yeah. And it's just, like, a bunch of people that can't seem to find anything else to do to earn money. Yeah. Because... Why are y'all on TV acting like this? Right, right. So, um, let's see. What else is going on? There was a story I saw about Kanye West on a boat with his booty cheeks oh. out. And um, I thought that was very strange, you know? Um, <laughs> apparently, he may or may not have been getting some head or something. But why are you on a boat when we can see your whole bare ass? We don't want to see that. <laughs> yeah, and Kim said that she's embarrassed. Really? And I mean, he's been embarrassing her for a minute yeah. now. So at this point, you can't even be surprised with his antics, walking around barefoot, <laughs> acting crazy. And I don't even know what to say about him anymore, but yeah. I really think his time of him being influential, it may have passed. Yeah, yeah. Because now it's just kind of like... It's like antics. It's like um, the only time he's really in the media now is for like controversial topics or like uh, it's not so much like his artistry anymore. Yeah, it's never yeah. about yeah. the music. Like right. it's always something he did or right. said. Right. And I feel like that really takes away from the artist. Like I don't know why everybody can't just be like Beyonce and just make music I'm and problematic. like she doesn't say yeah, much like, doesn't <laughs> like cause no problems no drama if right. anything she's uplifting people right. and not being in mess right. so Kanye he another one that's yeah. gone <laughs> <laughs> so let's go ahead and move on to my next segment called let me tell you something and this is a segment where we're going to do the interview. I'm going to ask you the questions. But we're okay. going to start with a little icebreaker game called fill in the blank. Okay. So 2023 has been blank. Ooh, has been adventurous. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> All hoes do is blank. Start drama. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> The best thing about being 6'2 is blank. Ooh. Hmm. The best thing about being 6'2 is. Ooh. I would say for me personally is uh, the conversation. Like it's a it's an icebreaker. Like it's a conversation starter. So a lot of people will come up to me and ask me like uh, my background and things like that. And I think that it kind of. It kind of just like eases into conversation. Oh yeah, so you'll always have something to talk about, yeah. like no matter what. Like <laughs> I'm six two. <laughs> like yeah. <laughs> the worst thing about being six two Ooh. is blank. Finding clothes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh yeah, because Very hard. Be sure. and I'm not even yeah. that tall. I'm five seven, and uh -huh. a lot of times my jeans be in the water. Yeah. So yes. I know that's a struggle it's for a you. Struggle, big struggle. <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite supermodel is blank. 
Naomi Campbell. Yes, yes. the GOAT. Yes. Okay. <laughs> a walk like no other. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Never blank on a first date. Mm. Never lie on a first mm. date. Mm. If I could have any superpower, I'd choose the ability to blank so I can finally blank. Ooh. I would, if I had a superpower, I would, it would be a healing power so I can heal people that are like, you know, hurt for whatever Oh, reason. that is so nice. I've never heard anybody really? say that to that question. <laughs> Most people say, like, I want to fly, or I want to, like, x-ray vision. Or, oh, wow, yeah. that is so nice. What's your sign? Sagittarius. Oh, okay, yeah. Sagittarius. Yeah. That's not really on brand for y'all. <laughs> Teach me something. <laughs> I'm still learning the signs and kind of, like, what they mean. So I mean, from what I know, uh -huh. y'all like to terrorize people. Really? Yes. <laughs> so I would never expect I want to heal the world really? oh, my out goodness. of the Sagittarius. <laughs> <laughs> maybe your other signs are like nice signs. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Yeah, so, yeah. got it. <laughs> <laughs> if a man does blank run. Ooh. Ooh. If a man, I would say if a man lies. Yeah, run. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a lot of them, so y'all yeah. should start running. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest fashion trend I've seen on the runway is blank. Ooh. Wow. The funniest one. Yeah. Or hmm. tacky or ridiculous. Tacky. I would say there is uh, there's this fashion show that I kind of do um, twice a year during um, LA Fashion Week, and there's this specific designer that is in the show every year, and I just think personally his line is like it's just very it's tacky. Mm. It's not much. Um, I guess it's creative in its own sense, but um, it consists of um, everybody. Well, all the models kind of like painting their faces like uh like white like uh like like super pale white mm -hmm. and then having like i don't know like two blush dots in the middle and then like it's so just clowns really weird. yeah basically like clowns oh, no. and then the outfits itself is just like a white t-shirt and like underwear and every time i see it i'm like oh i hope he doesn't pick me i don't want to be seen <laughs> on the runway and he has not picked me so so you do not want to be a yes. part of that <laughs> yeah so clowns in white tees and boxers. It's it's weird. Yeah. I don't I can't very even remember his name, but yeah, very a little tacky to me. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. I wouldn't want no parts in <laughs> The weirdest place I've ever struck a pose for a photo shoot is blank. Oh, um, the weirdest place. Hmm. I would say I would say an alley, um, and I know alleys are really like um, it can be very eccentric, very like you know raw and edgy and stuff. But um, I think outside of the photo, inside the photo looks really good, but outside of it, it's you know it's an alley downtown. So it's oh, like it's not smelly. Downtown. You have people Oof. that are walking by. That's I just like yeah. <laughs> I all try that. to avoid downtown at all costs. I live there, so it's like, ugh. Oh, I hate it. Yeah. I hate it. We'll be moving soon, though. <laughs> yeah, everybody I know, their first year, they move downtown, yep. and then they're like, I got to get gotta from go. down here. Gotta go. <laughs> mm -mm. Um, my one runway walk is blank. Oh, my runway walk is... Hmm. It is... I would say it's a mixture between... Fierce and confident. Mm. So I try to make sure that I um, I emulate like uh, smiles and I kind of engage with the audience. Um, I know a lot of times we're kind of taught to just be like, you know, very stoic, walk down, walk back. But I like to show my personality. So mm. well, y'all yeah. hear that she giving tips already. <laughs> I ain't even asked yet. She giving y'all tips. So take notes, okay? <laughs> I can't stand when blank. Ooh, I can't stand being hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't go yeah, outside because I, I almost burnt up driving here. Ooh, I was Lord. like, damn, what it. is going on? <laughs> what in the global warming? Right. I hate it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's bad too right now. I mm -mm. know. I know. Okay.
Okay. <laughs> my favorite food is blank. Ah, my favorite food. It's so crazy because I'm actually I'm vegan, but technically vegetarian because the mm. only food I can't let go is mac and cheese, and that's mm. my favorite. Meal. I mean, yeah. Yes. Oh, I make a good. Really? You got to give me some mac and cheese, girl. I got you. Everybody loves mine. <laughs> like, you know, I'm from Atlanta, so, you know. Really? Oh, my so, boyfriend's yeah. from Atlanta. Oh, wow. He just moved here in January. I convinced him. He did not want to leave. Uh, yeah, this... We, we can talk about it after the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, Because I was going to start dragging L.A. for Phil. <laughs> but I'm not even going to do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't come here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's move on. That was a fun icebreaker. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to ask some other questions now. Okay. So your journey from a pro basketball player to a model is quite unique. Tell us about your experience. Yeah, so um, the first person, well, I'll say from four years old to about 24, 25, I played basketball and I went from, you know, middle school, high school, college, and then I played in Czech Republic overseas. Oh, wow. So um, uh, it was very different from my life now. And I'm still, I still feel like even though I've been modeling for four or five years, I'm still kind of adjusting to that change because I still have like, I guess like tomboyish tendencies. Like my boyfriend points them out to me all the time, like how I sit sometimes. Or how <laughs> <laughs> and I still play basketball too for fun. So, um, but um, switching to being a model, at the same time, when I played basketball, I was still girly. Like, I would do my hair before games. I would, like, you know, have the whole, you know, the socks to match the ankle braces, to match everything. So I still had my feminine touch with it. So now um, it's, it's just kind of interesting because people, when people come up to me and they ask me, like, oh, do you play sports or do you model? It's like, you know, I kind of can be like, yeah. Yeah, I do that. I do both. That. I do that. Check, check. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's been a pretty easy adjustment. It's, yeah. It's That's good. How'd yeah. you get into it? Like, what was your first ever, like, big yeah. gig? So, when actually, when I came back from overseas, I went back home to New York. And um, I, I like dressing up. I like, you know, trying on different new outfits. And New York is kind of one of the fashion capitals of the world. Right. So, um, being out there, I would have people ask me all the time, do you model? And then my mom, she was like, all right, Sheba, you got to do something with this. So, she urged me to go to a casting for New York Fashion mm. Week. And I went to a casting and it, it went really well for me. Um, I didn't really know how to walk or like, you know, I, I didn't know anything. But um, once I got there and I kind of saw it, I was like, okay, this may be something I may want to do. And I ended up getting picked by like one of the top designers in wow. the show. Yeah. And um, it kind of started from there. And yeah, so I would say my mom kind of encouraged me to take that yeah. step and then yeah putting yourself out that's a great example of like putting yourself out there right. and just giving it a shot yeah. one casting yeah. like really like just completely changed your path yeah, so absolutely. yeah see putting yourself out there that's something that i preach or just trying yes like imperfect action yeah. so yeah, yeah that's great yeah. um what would you say is your definition of model because like i said <laughs> In this age, so many people, I model, I'm a model, yeah. I'm a model. But, like, <laughs> what do you think is required for somebody to actually say, I'm a model? Um, that's a good question. I would say, I think that being a model ha holds more of a responsibility than just um, taking pictures and uh, looking cute for Instagram and stuff like that. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, like, these, like, Instagram models, they are they are getting it they're getting their their money they're right. they're getting their bag and they're they're doing it and i i commend them for that but for me um i guess with my experience i've seen or people have asked me like do you model or are you an instagram model and stuff like that and i do kind of take offense to it a little bit because i just feel like there's a little bit more um artistry when it comes to like runway mm -hmm. or when it comes to even print modeling like editorial modeling yeah like um, a certain skill set you have yeah to have. that you have to encompass exactly um so i would say my definition of a model is somebody that um whatever piece or whatever um whatever what's the word um 
whatever you're trying to emulate, like of whatever the purposes of the shoot that you're translating that mm. um, that you're you're communicating that to the audience, which is through the picture. So if you're working with a designer and the focus is the blazer, then you make sure that you're not overshadowing the blazer. You're not um, you're not uh, over. You know, you're not covering, you're not, you're not making yourself the main focus. And I learned that through modeling that, okay, I am a model, and it seems like I'm the main focus because I'm on the runway, but it's not about me. It's about the designer, or it's about the photographer, and, you know. So I would say a model truly knows how to differentiate um, when they're the focus and when they're not. Mm. I think Instagram models, they're the focus all the time. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just about them and not yeah. necessarily about, like, the clothes yeah. or the item or anything like that. Yeah, right. I love what you said about being able to emulate things yeah. through mm -hmm. a photograph. So, yeah, yeah, the yeah. great definition. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's a quirky fact about yourself that people would be surprised to learn? Oh, hmm. That's a good question. <laughs> a quirky fact. What do I do that's weird? Um... I know there has to be something. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do that's weird? Um, I don't know. I guess I have, I, can I name one of my pet peeves? I guess sure. I have a pet, okay. I have like this really big thing when it comes to, um, when it comes to showers mm -hmm. and like getting out of the shower. Mm -hmm. um, I hate when someone steps like out of the shower directly onto the mat. So like when my boyfriend, me and my boyfriend moved in together, um, that was something that I had to like teach him and he thought it was like so weird. And I was just like, I hate it. And I know it's like, it's so minuscule, it's so small, but I don't know, it's just something that I just like can't get over. So, that, so you would rather them step on a towel? I'd rather them just like kind of dry off and then step and on then of it. Step out. Yeah, so like start the process inside of it. Because I feel like, I don't know, it just makes the bathroom like muggy and like kind of like if I go in there after and I step on the rug now and I was like, oh, I stepped in water. Like, I don't know, it's weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Got it. No, that it makes random. sense. It makes sense. <laughs> Everybody has their pet peeves. <laughs> Um, what's your secret to maintaining confidence and staying true to yourself in an industry that's known for its standards? Mm. I would say knowing what your, knowing what your standards are and your morals are like, um, you know, what you grew up knowing, um, what, what's right, what is right and what is wrong. Um, there have been, you know, there have been uh, job opportunities and stuff that just didn't align with how I view myself and how I want to represent myself. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a problem, like, declining those offers because I know that I don't just represent myself. I represent my family, you know, my parents, how they raised me, and um, even my boyfriend. Like, um, so, yeah, that would be Yeah, me. that's <laughs> good. Keeping your morals despite, yeah. you know... Everybody lose their morals for a paycheck. Yes, <laughs> it's so easy to because it's it's there's so many avenues now with like OnlyFans and yeah. like and just subscribing anything and and like I said I don't I don't knock anybody that uses that as an option but um, at the same time it's it's easy to get into that world. So, yeah, and yeah. honestly, the ability to be able to say no yeah. to certain stuff and pick and choose like mm -hmm. this is for me, this isn't for me, like that's powerful as well. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, let's see. Um, what's like a misunderstanding or assumption that people often make about you? Oh, wow. Well, since I'm a model that I'm like snobby, I'm unapproachable, arrogant, that type of thing. So when I have conversations with people, they're like, oh, you're totally different than what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she's so sweet. She said she wanted to heal the world. Like, wow. <laughs> Have you experienced any rejection in your career, and how did you handle it? Absolutely. Um, I think part of being a model is understanding that you're not going to align with everybody's um, view or your look is not going to align with everybody's vision. Um, so that's something that I, I feel like I kind of learned through basketball with, um, you know, uh, having a certain skill set or not making a certain team or not a certain position or playing time. So um, with me now, um, I kind of just 
I kind of chunk it to there's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing. I mm -hmm. just don't align with their vision. And um, I stay true to that because I know there are a lot of models that I talk to or like I mentor and they have a hard time with rejection. I try to mm. make that clear. Everybody's not gonna like you. Yeah, yeah. and what's for you is for you. Exactly. That's the exactly. key, right? <laughs> Rejection period is just like, what's for you is for you. Exactly. So every time I take a picture of one of my friends, they always say, I don't know what to do. I don't yeah. know what to do. <laughs> So the girls want to know, like, how do you manage to find the perfect pose? Like, what are some tips that yeah. can help people elevate their pictures? Okay, so I would say um, we all, I think we all have, like, distinct features. I think we all have things that separate us from, you know, the mass or, like, everybody else. So I would say tune into what that is about you. With me, I would say because I'm so tall, my legs and my arms, I use mm -hmm. that as my accessory for everything. Right. So like, legs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I have to get into some type of pose or anything, I'm always going to try to accentuate those pieces. So even if it's your hair or anything like that, like um, just find out what that is about you and then um, mm. try to work around that. And, and not to overthink it, because I have my friends, too, that, that aren't models, and they're just like, they ask me the same thing, and I'm like, don't overthink it. You're not, you're not a, a, you know, a 15-year-plus supermodel, but do what lines up with what, you know, you and your look. Like, don't, don't try to be a Naomi Campbell or anything or a, a Tyra Banks or nothing. Do something that's going to accentuate what you have on or what you look like. And, right, yeah. right. I have to use them to be like, I got hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you probably get this question a lot, but mm -hmm. what advice do you have for people that really want to break into the industry? Like how can they get noticed and get consistent work? Yeah. So I would say, um, like I said earlier, know, knowing what your lane, what lane you want to, um, what lane you want to embark in. So if it's runway modeling, if it's, um, you know, like hand modeling, foot modeling, there's so many like mm -hmm. different avenues in modeling. So knowing exactly which one you want to do and then um, finding out the greats in those, in that category. Like I keep bringing up Naomi Campbell because I like, I try to study her because um, runway modeling, that's kind of like, uh, that's what I enjoy doing the most. So um, if it comes to, foot modeling or I don't know, hair modeling, like look who is also in that lane and do your research on them and take notes mm -hmm. and try to emulate that, try to copy that and then add your own touch to it. Mm -hmm. And then um, outside of doing research, um, reaching out is very important too. So if you are a fan, I think a lot of us, we have kind of like this complex about us where it's like, we don't want to ask for help or mm -hmm. we're kind of like shy or we're kind of but like reach out to those people, like even myself, like I have people reach out to me all the time about modeling and I, I don't mind responding. And if I can help, if I have the information, I want to help. So right. give me the opportunity yeah, to help that's you. Super nice to yeah, me, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I would say that do your research, um, reach out to um, the people that are in that lane and then just go for it. Mm, yeah. Just go for yes. it. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's like any. Ab not abnormal, but like a not normal career. You just gotta like yeah, put yourself everything. out there and Absolutely. try. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So my last question mm -hmm. is: What's like a dream project or collaboration that you love to be a part of in the future? Like, yes. what's next for you? Like your big goals, you know, yes. with modeling. So my biggest goal with modeling, since I'm from New York City, mm -hmm. um, I grew up in. A Queens and I would always go to Times Square downtown mm -hmm. and the big lights and the big billboards and everything those were always like mesmer it was just always mesmerizing to be down there so my goal is to be a part of a big campaign on a billboard out there mm -hmm. um, meaning that because you can you can pay for billboards and stuff out there you right. can pay like you know like five hundred dollars to be out there for like 30 minutes but I want to be a part of a campaign so um, any big brand like um, Gap or Dior or, you know, any of those big name brands mm -hmm. that we know about, if I can get a, a campaign on a billboard in New York, I feel like, okay, this is this is the 
ultimate goal that I have in right modeling. like I'm really here yes and uh, <laughs> it's my dream to bring my family down there one day like all of us just meet out there and then we just like look at it together like I don't know I, I just I want to see my mom's reaction when she sees that so that's like wow that's my focus yeah yeah oh that's yeah. so nice well the way you go and the way you working you're certainly gonna get there <laughs> well, thank like you. thank you be on the lookout because it might be sooner than you know <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> so um my last segment is called Kim's inspiration and it's where I leave a thought or a quote or something you know for the listeners to take take with them you know inspire them and since you're my guest mm -hmm. I wanted to give you that honor so yeah give us something yeah so we've been talking about it a lot um, in our discussion but I would say that every journey begins with a single step and I know we've all heard it before but this is something that I think about personally um, because I like to set different goals for myself. And a lot of times I kind of intimidate myself with them. Like I'll think about it and be like, oh my gosh, well, okay, well, how do I actually get there? How many steps is it gonna take to get there? And I kind of like, um, it's like I convince myself that I'm not good enough or maybe it's not possible. And um, in those moments, I try to tell myself like, okay, one step at a time. And because we try to overload ourselves with information. And if we just mm -hmm. focus on like the next move, then all those steps is going to take us where we need to go. And essentially, we need those steps in order to get to that spot and to maintain that spot. So, um, yeah, that's my thing. Just focus on the next step. Don't think too You Dream big, for sure. But um, don't make it unreachable for yourself. Mm. Yeah. Wow, I love that. Thank you. And I mean, personally, that's something that, you know, I deal with, with starting this show. Like, yeah. it was like, oh, nobody's going to listen to me. I didn't yeah, yeah. And it's just like, just go. start. Yes. Just take the time. Like, it's yeah. not a mar it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Yes. And it's going to take time. And each step, like you said, is going to get you there. So. Exactly, exactly. Well, thank you for that, Kimspiration. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, that wraps us up the show today yeah. thank you for coming you tell so them much. where they can find you yeah sure you can find me on instagram at sheba.mc s-h-e-b-a dot mc um i'm still working on my social media on other accounts because a couple of them got hacked oh, from no. you know inactivity and stuff but so, uh instagram is kind of my primary um social media so you can follow me on there yay great <laughs> and of course you guys know Follow at a quickie pod. Follow me at the Kimber Shan show. And remember my three principles. Love yourself, respect yourself, and accept yourself. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>